<laughs> Ennis tennis. rhymes with tennis, not yeah. not Enos. It yeah. rhymes with, um, <laughs> yeah. Welcome everybody to another episode of Bikes and Bourbon. My name is Russ from Pathless Pedal. And I am Toffer, the bicycle dilettante. And today we're gonna talk about Rivendell bicycles. We're gonna drink some nice bourbons and a scotch even. Yes, we have uh, something local again. Something uh, from Montana. Something from Montana. And something not from Montana. Something <laughs> definitely not from Montana. Highland Park 12. And we're also going to talk about an article uh, from Outside Online that's actually been killing it with some interesting bike content. Yeah. And this one's a kind of portrait or vignettes of different cyclists. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice kind of photo essay. has mm -hmm. some, some portraits with some first person a uh, narration. I'm just jumping right into the bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's go. So the first thing Pour. we're drinking today is a Bighorn Bourbon Whiskey mm -hmm. from a Willie's Dis Distillery, and they're based out of Ennis, Montana, so Southwest Montana. This is the one distillery that I feel like when, locally, when you ask around, yeah. as far as, you know, if you wanted to get a Montana whiskey. Yeah, pretty well regarded. I feel like this one's got like a pretty delicate nose to it. It's not like mm -hmm. super spiky, uh, not, big alcohol punch in the face. It's like savory. It has a savory note to it to me. A little bit, yeah. Kind of yeah. on the tongue it is. It's not like, it's not super sweet like a, like a typical bourbon. I get a little bit of butter like up front. This has a, a nice smoothness to it. And at the end there's like mm. this little like minty lip off for me. This is something that should be enjoyed in a glass, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think something like, yeah, the, it really, some of the subtleties of it kind of come out with yeah. Something like a Glencairn that can kind of help you access some of those things. Yeah. That... So bike stuff. Bikes. So Rivendell Bicycles, if you're not familiar with them, they're based in Walnut Creek, which is Northern California. And uh, they're one of those brands where um, they really kind of believe in steel bikes, practical bikes, you know, not mm -hmm. racy bikes, but but good ones. I think they even have like a patch on their website that's like unracer. Right. <laughs> yeah. There's lots of things I think about Rivendell as far as like their the things that he promotes, mm -hmm. one of the things that always kind of sticks out to me is the gearing mm -hmm. that they offer on their bikes are not, they do not offer like a 50 right. big ring. You know, that's something they're kind of against. I think it's, it's gearing for mortal, mortals. Yeah, gearing. <laughs> they push things that make riding comfortable and right. practical, putting fenders on your bike. I think they make some ideas accessible. Like yeah. I remember Rivendell bikes were the first ones where Grant was like, the smaller sizes come with 26 inch wheels because... Because it makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> like, there's a lot of things that we maybe take for granted in our bike culture that he actually yeah. was pushing a long time ago. And it's yeah. uh, unfortunate to see, I mean, to get that email is a little <laughs> scary. Yeah, so what, what, we're, what we're referring to is he sent out an email blast to uh, subscribers of a uh, you know, Rivendell Reader or just previous customers and uh, basically you know, threw it out there and said, look, we kind of made some miscalculations, we're running short on funds, and this is kind of our Hail Mary attempt to, to remain, you know, afloat. Uh, yeah. So he, he, he said, you know, if you want to support us, you want to help us make, us, make it through, you know, buy like a $10 gift certificate, you know, buy, you right. know, the, the, by Monday or something. Right, it was like the weekend. Oh. So I saw that red flag and being like, a huge fan of Rivendell, the brand, although I don't own a Riv, it's one of those brands where I feel like if they shut down, like there'd be like a black hole in like the mm -hmm. bikey space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, just all these like aspects of bike culture that you kind of see on Instagram and other people doing, it's just- They've contributed so they've much. They've contributed so much. And so yeah, yeah, to be able to be like, oh, and I think that the way they broke it down, you know, NPR pledge drive style of like, ten dollars is all we need from you, and you're yeah. like, oh, like. I, I saw the the call to action. I reposted it on our stuff. I, I got a ten dollar gift certificate. It just felt like the the thing to do. Yeah, and, yeah, I did and, too. Yeah, it was one of those kind of yeah no brainers. I, if I, you can. And I think like very few brands could have pulled this off. Like, I think if Specialized was like, hey guys. <laughs> I mean, I guess one of the things that you get with the Rivendell brand is names of people that work there, like, yeah. are on the products. I think it's like, it feels like you're talking to, like, real people. You get that type of personality, like a personality, yeah, somebody sure. distinctive is, like, working here. They did it, they raised funds successfully, and then they sent out uh, a follow-up letter. I'm just gonna read a portion of it. Um, Thanks to you and not anything we did in less than a week, we went from uh, sure we'd be gone in four months, a fear I didn't spread to the crew here, 
to solid money footing and optimism. Uh, because of what you did, we can pay bills, buy inventory, pay credit card debts, pay decent checks, blah, 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 blah. A little bit scary to think about how close <laughs> they were. Yeah, to... we were like four months away from not having Rivendell. <laughs> yeah, and it's nice to know that, I mean, it'll be cool to see what they do because I feel like I was on their website recently and yeah, there's a lot of things that are sold out. You know, just inventory is low because they didn't have the cash the capital, to yeah. like. Another part of the letter, uh, no, si no simple thanks conveys what any of us are feeling. Uh, which is so much deeper and more complicated than that. Uh, what we're feeling is a huge relief, elation, and disbelief, and pressured in a good way to be worthy of it. And I think they're truly worth of it, worthy of it. Mm -hmm. so, so cheers, Rivendell. I'm gonna read a reader comment. Uh, so, uh, crap, I forgot who wrote this, but another, uh, it'll be flashed below. Another good video, supple yet rigid. Nice. <laughs> a suggestion. Bourbon and whiskey is a sedentary activity. Sit down and relax. It will mm. add to the atmosphere immensely and give a more supple feel. Mm. And I know that sounds like a good idea, but we actually shot the first episode two to twice. <laughs> One sitting down, and uh, when I looked at the footage, it just looked, it looked really boring. You know, two, two people talking is boring enough. Two people, <laughs> two people sitting and talking, oh my God. <laughs> Thanks for those comments though. I always, those, it's fun to see kind of people uh, chiming in with their opinion. I know that you've been doing Papo's pedal stuff for a long time and you're used to reading. Yeah, from my perspective, it's like, uh, you know, I've been making bike content for over a, dec for a decade and it gets kind of boring, honestly, to constantly do reviews in the same way. No one's doing humor well in the bike space and no one's having this kind of casual kind of but informed conversation. Are we doing humor well in the bike space? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I, I, I thought uh, the He-Man was awesome. <laughs> I want to try something new. Yeah. You know, it, it, it might not always work, it might fail, but like to keep myself motivated and, and entertained and, yeah. and doing this stuff, I have to keep pushing the envelope. Where we love bikes, mm -hmm. super important, super like kind of central right. to our lives <laughs> and, and a lot of like our identity, but then there's also like- There's other things. There's other things. <laughs> there's other things besides bikes and um, uh, bourbon is one of them. We're gonna do, we're gonna switch to the scotch now. So if you have some Highland Park 12, you can join us here. This is a fairly common, uh, I mean, I feel like it is. I feel like we get stuff in Montana. <laughs> if we can get it here, you can probably get it wherever you are. <laughs> so, um, although like, to be fair, Grizzly, Grizzly liquor in, in uh, Missoula is yeah. pretty awesome. Go, they go out, all in on the Viking. It feels like a, a tribal tattoo bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes it does. Okay, That's so funny. this is a scotch. Does not have the typical bourbon characteristics. All right, we've left Kentucky. Yeah, we've left we've left the, the land of like vanilla and Ooh. honey and uh, and we've gone into Viking land apparently. Yeah, the alcohol and, and oh, some smoke definitely is there. So <laughs> like on the taste, like the first thing I think of is like a campfire. Like a nice smokiness. I don't think it overpowers. Yeah. I just think of coming off of like a bourbon. Oh yeah, for sure. The smoke. <laughs> Front and center. There's more. There's like a complexity. Mm -hmm. There's like sure. really nice. I mean, it's like, I don't, I feel like drinking it, you can sip on this and to me, like I'm pulling out several notes. It kind of unravels. So the next thing we're talking about is oh, yeah, an the, article uh, from Outside Magazine. Outside Online. Outside our, Online. Our <laughs> new, our new go-to right. <laughs> place for, for bike news. And so these stories are kind of about, I don't know, people at kind of a crux in their lives and how, like Kelton Wright, who's the first picture, if you go go look mm -hmm. at it. So she was a, a cyclist and a med student, felt like something was wrong, and the doctor was saying, no, 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 but then it ended up being a tumor. Yeah. So now it's kind of like. like it, yeah, it was like growing. It started off like a marble, then it was like a golf ball. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it was like removed and. So they weren't uh, like, super shiny, happy people bike stories. There was a little oh. bit of conflict, a little bit of drama, right. kind of like some aspects of cycling that you don't typically think about. Like what was that one about that one uh, Latina woman? Yeah, Isabella Sandoval. The photo I think is just like a great photo because it's about her, her kind of reflecting on her own personality and how her personality kind of as a non-cyclist translates to her starting to identify more as a cyclist. And her vignette was about kind of like body image. Like she, she was pretty comfortable with herself. She's not like the typical stick figure thin 
uh, body type. But then when she started cycling, she kind of had to re. It made her reevaluate. Well, like that. I think I think I mean, and it's like that's something that I think a lot of people can appreciate about. Like yeah, like the first time you put on <laughs> lycra, the stretchy pants, the stretchy <laughs> pants. And once again, these are like two to three paragraphs. So I mean, they're not yeah like these like completely fully developed stories. Like what I want more than anything in the bike industry is more stories being told mm -hmm. that don't focus so much on the bike, but that focus on the people. Like right. I mean, just giving you insight into who the people are. So for, for me, like the story that I could relate with the most probably was the, the, the Kyle Kelly one. <laughs> so Kyle runs a Golden Saddle and uh, you know in, in, in his vignette, he was talking about this dilemma of he was gonna go on this trip um, with his soon to be fiance, he was gonna propose and do a bike ride, but then, or like me, he, uh, you know, he's made the um, decision for better or for worse to make his life also his job. So he, there's this internal debate. So he's of, living the dream. Yeah, pretty much. So he's like, should I, you know, should I make, you know, this whole trip with my soon to be fiance, you know, content for the stream or should I make it personal? For me, like I, I struggle with that too. Like sometimes when Laura and I go out on a ride, it's like, well, geez, this, this could be something I could be filming for the YouTube channel, but sometimes I just want to enjoy the experience. You know, I've come to the point where it's like a, a true vacation. A true vacation is a bike ride without a camera. It, it sounds silly, but I can I can relate. <laughs> well, no, but I guess that's what was interesting. I mean, or not, you know, interesting and nice about these these vignettes was that the insights into how the individual person, you know, the individual cyclist concerns and right. like, where they overlap, and that like, you know, I think riding a bike, you can have time to really kind of process through a lot of these different mm -hmm. thoughts and emotions. And this article was uh, like a nice opportunity just to kind of like pause and reflect. I found myself kind of like scrolling and being like, I need to, like, uh, <laughs> because like they're intense. There's, uh, yeah. there's just the, some of the not, stories. Not unlike the scotch. That's why we actually switched to scotch. A little bit <laughs> moodier, smokier, like the article. Some, wasn't, some, wasn't all like shiny, happy some, people. Some layers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I appreciated like a, a bike story where it wasn't just like the perfect bike life. That there was like some conflict, some drama, some kind right. of sense of like human struggle going well, especially on. Especially if you, I mean, several of the people, I mean like Kyle, uh, Phil, I mean, are maybe people that like, if you follow different bike Instagram accounts, they I mean, have I think a presence. They have a presence yeah. on online, and so it was kind of yeah interesting to get some insight into just how they process being a cyclist. And that's that's the stuff I find interesting because I feel like you know like like Kyle and Phil like there's the the public uh, face you know, of, of living the dream. But then there's also like a very private side where, you know, it doesn't make sense to share that or, you know, but but, but what I think is mo the most interesting aspect of things yeah. sometimes. That's what I appreciate about that article. Uh, so any last notes on the, the, uh, the Viking Island honor? Um, so okay. one thing, one, one tip I, I have learned is if you do this, like if you've got just like a little bit of whiskey mm -hmm. and you kind of coat the glass, mm -hmm. And it really like <clears throat> amplifies the smell. You know, I wouldn't suggest doing this with like a full glass, clearly, but. <laughs> Interesting how light it is for something that's so smoky. There's not, like, an aggressiveness, but it's not like heavy. It's Yeah, it doesn't want to kill you. It just wants to slap you around for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. With like scotches, there's something like astringent or, or pungent or smoky that's mm. not necessarily pleasant like at the beginning, but you start to like acclimate to it. <laughs> And it becomes kind of like a, a nice, like, you know, it makes it a little bit more challenging, a little bit more interesting. Well, Let's uh, wrap it up. Uh, thanks again for joining us for another episode of Bikes X Bourbon. Uh, if you guys have suggestions for topics, leave those in the comments below. Let us know what you think. And once again, until uh, next time, ride bikes. Travel. And do good. Cheers. Cheers.